the diamond and jewelry industry goes through a lot of different cycles and it's very much impacted by the economy. I would say in the last two years it's been difficult. I think it will remain a little bit difficult this year. I think it's the first time we're going through a global slowdown where there's not one market that's really thriving when it comes to jewelry. How has a China slowdown affected the industry? We're seeing that uh, polarization happening in the industry where a lot more volume is happening at the lower price points. You can still sell the exceptional, but the in-between is really where people are having more difficulties. How much am I holding right now? You're actually holding $13 million in your hands. Oh my that's, goodness. Uh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> What's the difference between a good long-term investment and one that's not so much? So what you really want to do in gemstones is go for the rarest possible gems. So here we have a 50 carat D flawless. D meaning means colorless. It's the best possible grade you can get for color. Flawless means it's free of inclusions. So Mother Nature produces a lot of diamonds, but very few are actually pure. Compared to one that's just next to it, although it's smaller, there's a tint of yellow, and therefore it is more common than the colorless diamonds. If you want to think about investments in rarity, the higher the color, the more rare, and therefore the more value. So I would clearly go for the 50 carat defaults, assuming <laughs> the 13 assuming million dollar one. <laughs> of course. I know that you cater a lot to uh, Middle Eastern royalty as well. Mm -hmm. But given the plunge in oil, mm -hmm. how have their purchasing behaviors changed? People uh, realize that the markets are changing, that oil prices may stay low for a while. And therefore, people will come back to different asset classes. And I think this is probably one of the best asset classes you can invest in. Why? Small portable, very high value, bare size or weight. I know that you make these exceptional uh, fantasy bras for mm -hmm. Victoria's Secret that go for what? Uh, your record was $11 million. Mm -hmm. Who buys them? Well, we sold one. Okay. Uh, I think it's more a collector's item. Uh, in general, we make them for the beauty, for the show, and we keep them. We keep them. In fact, the one we did for 2015 is still in our possession and we'll keep it maybe in the Mawad Museum for a long, <laughs> long term.